Okay, everybody, welcome back to another live online learning webinar. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Um, today, we are going to be looking at Maestro Designer, specifically looking at uh, PSD import and the After Effects plugin. Uh, before we jump into the webinar, I'm just gonna go over a couple of points with you. Um, so first of all, um, this webinar is being recorded. Uh, you'll notice that your audio is muted. However, you are welcome to ask us questions. Um, if you're in the Zoom session with us, you can use the Q&A function at the bottom of the screen. Um, but if you're watching us from a streaming platform like LinkedIn, Facebook, uh, YouTube, uh, you can comment and leave your questions. I'm gonna be monitoring those threads. So let me know if you have any questions that you want me to relay to Sebastian today. Um, all of our recorded sessions will be posted to our website at app.com. Um, and then if you're in the Zoom session, you can also raise your hand so we know you're with us. So today we have Sebastian with us. Um, Sebastian is a senior RTG artist and a customer care expert with us. He has more than 10 years of experience with Avid's graphics products. Um, so Sebastian, whenever you're ready, you're welcome to take the screen sharing from me. Thank you, Lainey. Uh, welcome to all to this uh, new webinar on PSC import and After Effects plugin. I will start sharing my screen and we will go over a review on how to import our projects to uh, Photoshop and After Effects. So we will start by uh, Adobe Photoshop. Here I have an example. This is an example file from Adobe Photoshop. So what we're going to do first is we're going to see what we can bring from Photoshop into Master Designer and how should we configure this file regarding the layers and the effects and the texts and everything in order to have the same file imported into Master Designer. So I have prepared something, a quick review on some important points to have in count, to take in count, what we can and what we can't import from Photoshop to Master Designer to be edited. So basically uh, we can import text layers and we will get inside Master Designer a text element that will be editable and we will get a sample of the original text as a text too. So we will get two elements for each uh, PAC text layer. About the vectors, we can get, uh, we can work vectors inside Photoshop and they will be imported into Maestro Designer as a spline geometry that will have a, a cut and that will have a shape and we can work that shape uh, with the Bessiers and change it but we will have all the chances to, to work that directly on Master Designer. Uh, simple layers are imported as rectangle, which, uh, as, which has uh, texture. So basically for each layer that is not a text and is not a shape, let's say a layer with uh, an image or something that you created in Photoshop that is not a text or a uh, shape, we will get a rectangle inside Master Designer. And in that rectangle, we will get a texture that will have that uh, image already scaled and positioned in the original position that it is in the PSC file. Then about the effects, this is something important. Um, the effects that we applied in Photoshop are rendered let's say inside the Adobe Photoshop software. So in order to have the same effects inside Master Designer, we will, not, we will need to rasterize uh, these layers. We will go over that. And we can also work with masks inside uh, Adobe Photoshop. And we can get those elements already masked inside Master Designer. We won't get the mask and the object. We will get the object already masked, cropped, and uh, with the mask applied, and we will get just a single texture from that element, not the image and the mask. 
So um, this is uh, this is the the user guide from Master Designer. We have a whole chapter for Adobe Photoshop import. I, I won't go over it. If you are already a customer or three designer, four designer, master designer user, you will find this in your user guide about how you will find the, the options for each kind of element in Adobe and how we will find them into Avid master designer. You will get that for each kind of element, let's say like a paragraph, in Photoshop, in Maestro Designer, the representation is going to be like this. And for the font size, it's going to be translated to the units that we use inside Maestro Designer. And in the user guide, you will find a lot of information about this, more precise with snapshots, so you can work your text in Adobe Photoshop in the way that you need it and how you will find it inside master designer in this case the text something important to take in account regarding text is that a master designer will need to find the font that we are using in adobe photoshop so basically we have a little table as an example on how you will see this font in photoshop and how a master designer is going to find it remember that master designer search for the internal name of the font not for the name of the font file okay so we will need to make sure that uh, our font is named correctly so we can have the same font inside master designer then uh, this is something regarding the shapes so if you are working with the shape inside photoshop you will get the same shape that we we have here which is this heart shaped element you will get it inside master designer as a cut editor with all the points and you will be able to manipulate it inside the software okay so this is a whole chapter that you already have in your user guide i recommend you to go over it after this webinar and you will find that it's really easy to to move your project from photoshop to uh, master designer so let's start with an example. I have three examples for Photoshop. Let's go quick to the first one. So basically what we have here is a lower third and this lower third is for sports. And we have uh, a background. Then we have a flag and we have a name that is, is a text, a description. Then we have a space for the image and a background for the whole composition. So I will go to the layers of this PSD file and we will go here. Let me just show you. So let's say I have this element selected. So you see that for each of the layers that I have in my PSD file, I have an effect applied. Okay, in this case, I have an inner glow in this case, I have a gradient overlay. So these effects before taking this file into Master Designer will need to be rasterized. So we need to burn them, okay? So we're going to convert each one of these elements in, into a single element, okay? So I'm going to select all of them with control. And we're going to go to layer, and we're going to go to rasterize and here we can select to rasterize layer style so what what we're going to do is we're going to apply the layer style and flatten the layer with the layer style so i'm going to apply it and now instead of having an, an effect applied separately into the element i have one single element and the effect is no longer there as an option is already burned into the element okay so this is how we need to move any effects that we are applying to the layers into master designer then about the naming of the layers it is important for you to take into account that each layer from the psd file needs to be named differently okay 
So we don't we we won't be able to have two elements or two layers with the same name. Basically, because when Maestro Designer is going to import the file, uh, uh, it's going to create a different PNG file for each one of these layers. This is what the importer does. We open this in Maestro Designer and we create a PNG file for each one of these layers. So it is important that all of these layers are named differently, okay? So we can't, because if we have uh, two layers that are named the same, we will create a file for that layer. And then if we have another layer with the same name, we will overwrite the previous one. So we need to create, or the importer tool need to create actually a different uh, PNG file for each one of these layers. So they need to be Name it differently. This is something important to take in account. So what we did is to rasterize the effects. We already had the layers uh, named as different with different names. So I'm going to save this. And I will go to my project. I already built this webinar. And inside webinar, I have uh, PhD projects, and I will save it as PhD webinar example. Okay. So this is the same file, but with the effects rasterizer, and I didn't change that much besides that. So now let's go to the master designer. Now, in the master designer, we will need to create a new scene. We can choose any of these uh, camera options. It's the same. So I will go with the 3D. And now when we have an empty scene, we will go and import this PSD file into the master designer. So for that, we have the option inside file, import, and we have an option that says import Photoshop. So I'm going to click on it and I'm going to select the file that I just created, which is PSD webinar example. And it will bring everything from the original PSD file, as you can see. Now, let me show you how this works in the background. So you know where to find all these elements, because basically what the importer is doing is creating a rectangle and mapping each one of this layer inside the rectangle. So now each one of the layers is converted into a, a PNG image. So where is this image stored? When you, you use the importer, you will need to go to sheet drive textures, and there you will find a folder like this one. And inside that folder, the, the name of the folder is going to be the name of the file. So <clears throat> if, the, if the file is named PSD webinar example, I will find a uh, folder with the same name inside sheet drive textures and inside that folder i will have each one of the layers already cropped and separate okay so this is basically what is going to be mapped into each one of the rectangles the importer is separating each layer into individual images and it's placing them inside textures in a folder name the same as the file name okay now let's see what we have here we have the background and we have the lower third background and we have each one of the elements with the same properties in the same position and everything now something important you see that in here i got the texts and i have like a duplicated text this is because the importer create, created two elements for each text from the PhD file. It created a text element with all the properties from the original text in Photoshop. These two. So I have them here as text elements with the font, with the alignment, with the size and everything. But I also have two images of each one of the texts. This will uh, serve as a reference to know how they were placed and if we need to move them or change anything 
uh, to fit our texts in, into the composition. You see that I have a displacement in the text. This may happen due to several reasons, like uh, the scale I may use in here, or the camera I use in the scene, or the, the font, or how I align the text. So in some cases, we will, you will get like a little displacement of the text. You can just select the text together and move them together like this. And there you go. It's really easy. And there you go. In the case of the name, I will have it here. Because uh, this, not, this only happens with the text with, because the text has a lot of properties in Photoshop, like a paragraph like alignment, like uh, you can change the size of the font and the size of the element. And some, in some cases, you will get this displacement inside Master Designer because Master Designer is trying to get all the properties from the text and maybe some of them may be not precise. So you just need to move like this and that's it. And now I can turn off the references and there you go, you already have the same lower third that I designed in Photoshop. And uh, I don't need to import like in other cases that you need to import each texture separately and resize it and move it and add the text manually. So in this case, it will be all done in a single click. And that's it, you already have your elements here. Now what you can do is just create an animation and uh, and make uh, make this work. Let's say I want to create an animation for this lower third. I will turn off the background that comes from the PSD file. I don't need it. So I will move this element to come from off screen. So I will create a new animation that is called in. I will place the whole group outside my screen. I will set a keyframe. And then I will go, let's say to the frame 25 and I will place it in the position, let's say the original position zero. So now I already have my lower fur animated and then I can just clone and mirror to have an out animation. I am really doing really fast this so we can go to other example. And the other thing that we will need to do is to create an export for the text this is going to be the name and it, it will be changed from Mice to News or Mice to Live or whatever uh, control software that you're using. And we will create a second export for the description. And we will create an export also for the image so we can replace this image. And that's it, this is our scene. So we have the in animation, we have the, the texts, we have the exports for, for the text and the image, and I will create another one for the flag. So we can change also the flag. It's really quick. So you can, if you feel more comfortable or if you are working only with Master Designer and you get a PSD file from a designer from other department, you can just open that file in your Photoshop, rasterize the effects, rename the, the layers if necessary. If you have two layers or more with the same name, just rename them. And you will import the design in here and you already will have it uh, prepared for animating and creating your scene. That's it. I will save the scene as PSD example one. So I will show you another example inside Photoshop. Let's go to the example two, I will go quicker. So in this case, I just want to show you how the mask works. So I have a layer in here. Let's say I select this region and I apply a mask. There you go. Now I will save this as PSD webinar example two. Now, how is this mask? that we have here rendered inside Master Designer. So I will go and create a new scene. I will select to file, import the PSD file, and we will go with the file I just created. 
And as you can see, what I get is a simple image with the mask already applied, okay? You see that the size of the element is the original size, but this has the mask already applied. It's a single element, a single image, okay? So from this, we will get a single image already with the mask applied. And then for the third example inside Photoshop, I already have this. This is just for you to give you ideas for working PSD file and animations. This is uh, an image from, uh, I think it is a Star Wars movie. And uh, so this is some kind of composition. And what I did is I uh, separated each element using Adobe Photoshop into different layers. So I have here the, the character, I have a part of the background, I have another part of the background, and I have the main background. So I saved this into a PSD file, and then I went here and I imported it, as I showed you before. And then using this PSD file, I created this kind of animation with a parallax effect. So this is all flat layers that I'm placing in a 3D camera and I'm creating this effect of depth. And the smoke is particles from the same maestro designer. So these particles that you have here, the smoke from the saber and the smoke from the background are just particle emitters from maestro designer. So basically you can start by making your design into inside Photoshop and then you can import it into Maestro Designer and you will get separate elements for each layer from the PSD file. And then you can animate them, place them and apply different kind of effects inside uh, Photoshop, uh, Maestro Designer, sorry. So taking account that regarding the blending modes, some of them we will be able to replicate them, some of them not, you can just check that the, the blending mode that you're using here is available inside the blending modes that we have inside Master Designer. And this will be it for the PSD file uh, part, how to import PSD files into Master Designer. Just go ahead and try it. It's really fun, it's really easy, and it's really quick to improve your workflow. Now let's go to the second part of the webinar which is a part of After Effects. So we have a plugin that doesn't come uh, with, the, um, with the Maestro Designer. You will need to ask Avid for it, but it's a really useful plugin in cases where you want to import an After Effects project into Maestro Designer with the elements, the masks, and the animations, everything already prepared, okay? taking account that in this case, we also have the limitations that the, the After Effects uh, filters or effects that you may use inside After Effects, uh, they will exist only here inside After Effects. So you will need to render them in order to have them inside Master Designer, okay? So if you apply any kind of effects, color corrections or anything, you will need to render that part in order to have it inside Master Designer because Master Designer won't be able to replicate the effects from uh, After Effects. So in this case, we have a really simple lower third. Let me go over uh, this document that I have here for the plugin. When you get, this document is available on Avid website you don't need to have the, the plugin in order to see this document. You can just go to the Avid website and the Learning Center, and you will have this, um, this user guide. And uh, if you don't find it, you can always reach Avid and we will send it to you. And uh, here, what you have is a uh, step-by-step on how to build your After Effects project in order to make them um, compatible with a uh, master designer. Uh, let's go over some main points so we can go back to After Effects. This is uh, important, which is the composition settings. 
and you will need to take in account the size of your composition and the frame rate of your composition. So basically, this is going to be how the uh, rent, this is going to be the same uh, configuration as your render engine. So if your render engine is in HD, you will need to put to place the composition in the same size and in the same frame rate. Okay. And then you have in this document where to find each one of the properties or elements that you can find inside After Effects in Maestro Designer. So basically everything that you get from After Effects is translated inside Maestro Designer, the position, the scale. We, we have a lot of uh, integration, the blending mode. Also, we have this blending modes that we are using inside After Effects. We will find them here. The same as in Photoshop, you will need to check that the blending mode that you are applying inside your Adobe software exists inside our Avid uh, Master Designer. We have a lot of them. Uh, you may find that some of them you won't have them. In that case, the bad thing is to uh, render that layer separately, okay, in order to have the same result. So you can see some examples of the one that we have. Okay, this is uh, from for designer in master designer. We have more, we added more, and then we can see the same as in the PhD tutorial that the shapes elements that we work in After Effects are converted into splines with cuts inside master designer. And in our case, the anchor, the anchor point from uh, After Effects, it's placed it into the axis or pivot in Master Designer, and you can just go over everything so you can see where to find all the properties from your elements in After Effects into Master Designer. This is a really long and really useful user guide, so you can have an idea of what you can do taking your project from After Effects into Master Designer, okay? We won't go over this because this is too long, but you can find it in Avid website or you can ask uh, Avid and we can send it to you, okay? Remember, this is a plugin. It doesn't come uh, with the Master Designer. We need to ask it separately. So let's go to the project. In this case, we have a basic project, which is, which is a lower third with a coming up. And uh, in this case, we have Stranger Things. So I will just play it so you can see what we built here. This is one, two, three, four, five, six solid elements. And the last one, the white one, is acting as a mask of the text. If you see here, I'm applying the the white solid as a mask to the text. So same case as uh, Photoshop, you can work your masks into After Effects. And in this case, the mask will be translated into a Maestro Designer mask. In this case, you will have your element and your mask separately with the same uh, mask that you applied in after Effects, but in Master Designer. If we go here and go to Masks, you will see that each one of the After Effects mask modes is translated into one of the Master Designer's legacy masks, okay? And uh, I will just go ahead and export this to Master Designer, there is no much than that in this project. So I will go to File, and when you have your plugin, you will see that you have an option for the export that is called Avid for Designer Scene. Okay, so basically this this will this will export your project into a designer scene, a master designer scene. Okay, if you are working with previous versions as like three designer or four designer, you can also use this plugin. Okay, this is for all designers versions. So I will select to export it. And it will ask me three things. 
where is the project folder? In my case, it's in sheet drive projects. And then in which project I want to save this uh, composition. So I have a project inside my Maestro Designer environment or my Avid graphics environment. Inside projects, I have a project that is called webinar. Okay. And inside that project, I will save this as webinar lower third. That's it. So it's really quick. Now, if I go to my master designer, I will go to file open. And inside my webinar project, I will see that now I have the scene called webinar lower third, which is the one I just exported from After Effects. I will open it. I, in this case, I have my render engine configured in a different uh, frame rate that the, the After Effects scene. It won't affect that much because I was working with other frame rate. Remember that in order to see how you have your render engine configured, you will go to renderer, RE settings, and there you see the format that you're using and the frame rate that you're using, okay? You will need to place the same values into your composition settings in order to have everything uh, working as it should. Let's go back to the master designer. So you see that here I have two layers. What is this layer? This layer is a pre-composition. We can move pre-compositions from After Effects into Maestro Designer. And they, they will be created as separate layers. And those layers are going to be working rendered as a texture, okay? So basically all, what, all the elements that, that we have inside this layer are, are going to work as a simple texture and are going to be mapped inside one of the elements of the main composition. This is the same as After Effects does when it works with compositions, pre-compositions. So here I have this, and then I will have the same element in here as a pre-composition. So basically, we have the same option in here, okay? So let's play this animation. We will need to see if everything is okay. So I play the in, and as you can see, Let's stop the animation. As you can see, I will go frame by frame. You see that I have all the same animations that I bring from After Effects. And you see how the mask that I created inside After Effects, it's being applied also inside my designer. What it does, it converts the white solid into a mask and applies that mask into the text element automatically. We don't need to do anything in the middle. And we will get also the text with the same properties as, as the text from After Effects. So that's it. You just import it and you will get your animation working, okay? It's really easy. And uh, remember that you can bring your shapes, you can bring your mask, you can bring your text, you can bring um, your blending modes, and uh, there is a lot of uh, other options that you will find in the in the guide, in the user guide for the plugin. But basically, this is the workflow. It's really easy, and you see that in After Effects, I didn't need to do anything. So one more thing regarding this, which is really important, is the exports. How do I create? an export in order to change the text from the After Effects. I have two options. I can create the export when I already brought my scene, or I can create the export from After Effects. So yes, we have the option to create exports inside After Effects. It's really easy to do. We're going to use a really simple tool from After Effects, which is called the markers in after effects you can place markers into your timeline so for creating an export we're going to create a marker i will do it from scratch let me just remove this one so let's say i have this this uh, composition in after effects and i want to 
bring this already with the export created for the text. So I will select my text in the, in the composition, sorry. And once I'm over the element that I want to create the export for, I will go to layer and I will create a marker, okay? It's not important where you are placed in the timeline. It's not important. It's the same if I create a marker here or here or here, okay? The important is where you are placed in your elements tree, let's say, which layer you have selected, because this is the layer for we, for we are going to be creating the export, sorry. So I will select this layer, which is the text, and I will go to layer and I will add a marker. Okay, now I will double click on it. So how do I name this export in order to receive it in Time Maestro Designer? Basically, I will need to first access which property of the text element that I that I am standing on I want to change. So if I go back and I go and I select the text. You see that I have a lot of properties for the, the text, not only the value, but the position, the opacity, that uh, I can export any of them. So I will go to the marker and I will select which property I want to export. Let's go back one second in here. And in the user guide for the importer, you will see that we have a list. And this is all the properties that we can export from After Effects into Master Designer and how we need to name them, okay? If I want to ex export the text, I will need to name, to access the property with the text label, okay? Each one of the, pro of the properties of each element is accessed with a different name, okay? If I want to export the position X, I will need to place inside the parameter name, of my element inside my marker, I will need to place position X. For the text, I will just name it text. Okay, so when I put the word text, I'm accessing the text string of the element I'm standing on, okay? And I can access other properties from the same element. Now, this is something important and relevant. The property that I want to access need to have a specific character in front of it, which is this character. Let me just zoom in. We need to place first this character and then the name of the property, okay? This is really important. If we don't put this character in front of the property that we want to export, that will be ignored from the Maestro designer side. So we place this element. This element will, will tell Maestro Designer that this is an export, and then we will specify which property are we exporting from that object. And then in the second column from the marker, I can give a name to that export. Let's say text export. Okay, this is the name of the export. This is the property I'm exporting. Remember, you have the list of the properties in the user guide. We have a lot of properties to export. So this is something I already did in the scene before exporting it. So if we go back here, you will see that if I go to my exports list, I already have my text export created and I will change it, change value, okay? And it works like a normal export. Remember, I will go over again, just really quick, select the element from your composition, add a marker, layer, add marker, then edit that marker and go into parameter name. And here you will put the property that you want to access. Okay, in this case, the text value and the name that you want to give to the export. This is my export and this is the name of the export okay and you can do the same with any other elements and other properties of course like the opacity like the 
orientation, like the scale. You can do it with specific properties from the text, like the font scale, the font size. If I want to change the font scale, I will copy this. I will go back to the After Effects and I will create in here. I can add to an existing one. If I already have a marker for that text element, I will add a second export. So I will remember always to insert first the symbol and then the name of the property, font scale like this. And then I can just put the name to the export, like this is the font size. Okay, this is the name of the export that I'm going to see in, inside my three signer. And I can have another one, like I did before for the text. And this is my text. And I have another one for another property. Okay. So for each one of these elements, I will create a marker. And inside that marker, I will add all the exports that I want to create. I will go with the second example uh, in After Effects and we will finish the webinar. Just let me open this one. So this is uh, an another example that we have for showing the plugin. This is a basic lower third with two text, breaking news. You see that I have a highlight here, an image. So in this case, we already have the export created. I have, the, you see that here, I have the exports already created. If I edit the marker, I will see that this is the export for the text property and it's called title. If you want to put a, a label to the marker, you do it here in the comment section and you will see it in your timeline with that comment. And I will go here and I will repeat the process, export into Avid for designer scene. I will export it inside the webinar project and I will name it webinar example two. Okay, there you go. Now, if I go to Master Designer, I can go to File, Open, Webinar Example 2. There you go. Again, I, I'm working in a different uh, frame rate. Don't worry about the frame rate. It won't affect that much your composition. It's, it will automatically, Master Designer always automatically adjust the keyframes to the frame rate that you're working it. So, you will only get a warning uh, advice, but it won't affect the, how your scene works. And there you go. Really quick, really easy to do. Just work your project inside After Effects, export it, and import it inside Master Designer. Lainey? Perfect. Thank you so much, Sebastian. That's great. Um, I don't have, I'm not seeing any questions at the moment, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, share the next couple of sessions with all of you. Let's see. Okay, so tomorrow we are running another session. We are looking at Media Composer, um, so if you're interested in that, we'd love to have you stop by. Um, and then next week, we have three more sessions, starting with a Pro Tools session um, on Tuesday. And then on Wednesday, we have another Maestro Designer session. So if you are interested and, and you want to follow up, um, you can stop by in a week. Um, and I think that covers it for now. So thank you all so much for joining us. Uh, Sebastian, thank you so much. You're welcome. And we will see you all next time.